Come on, get up on your feet today. Hallelujah. God is good. We are welcoming you today. Amen. He said, no visitors today? Well, guess what? We are all brothers and sisters. So that means we're going to welcome those who are on, um, on our Facebook page. Come on. Y'all ready to sing with us? Amen. Come on. If you know it, clap along with us and sing. One, two, welcome to... announcements for today. See your voices for church weekly activities from March 18th through March 24th. Upcoming events, the Reverend Byron Taylor Academic Excellence Scholarship, Milo Parks Sports Recreational Scholarship application process will kick off today. The application period will open March 18th and end on May the 1st. There will be an informational briefing meeting on Tuesday, April the 9th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at New Bell. You may pick up a copy of the flyer at the Greeter's desk. New Members Fellowship today in the Fellowship Hall, immediately following the 10 a.m. service. Illinois State Baptist Women Convention, Thursday through Saturday, March 21st through the 23rd, East P. Orion, Illinois. Leadership Meeting, March 29th to 6.30 p.m. Resurrection Celebration Festival, Saturday, March 30th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Children New Christians asking for candy donations. March 24th, Pastor North will be preaching at the Southern Town Baptist Church in Brooklyn, Illinois at 3.30 p.m. Please come out and support the pastor. Mission Easter Sunrise Breakfast, Sunday, March 31st at 7 a.m. Theme, Resurrection of Christ. Scripture John 11 and 25, our own Mr. Charles Johnson will be the speaker. There will be one Sunday school class in the sanctuary. New Better School Pastor, second Tuesday every month, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The ministry still asking for donations. See the list located at the reader's desk. Attention mission leads before planning an event. Check the office center to make sure there are no conflicts with the event that you are planning. Please provide an office of the work by Tuesday of every week. Notify the media and music mission for media and musical support. New members needed, Angel Pride Team, Praise Virtual Team, ages 3 and up. Contact Sister Nikki Johnson with Sister Charlotte Hood. Health permission contact Sister Kenesha Smith. Usher mission contact Brother Charles Brown. Volunteers needed for Nehemiah Music Security Mission contact Deacon James Augustus. Children and Youth Mission contact Deacon Tyrone Smith. 
to report any members who are sick or any hospital or any deaths, contact the office staff, or you may get a prayer request card from an usher. Prayer line will pray for every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 6 a.m. Don't forget to include your prayers. Our members, relatives, and friends, those in bereavement, our service men and women, our leaders in our churches and our country. For God's to provide the seed for the Spirit, the only purposes that we survive are the ones linked to God. Proverbs 19 and 21 says, Many are the plans are in the person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Y'all have a good day.
say yes you are, yes you are merciful, yes you are kind, there's nobody like you in all of the earth, Father you're so good, you're so loving to us, bless the preach world tonight, today that is, preach God through me, anoint my, my vocal cords to think through my mind, Father, they came to hear a word from you, so Father, don't disappoint them. Speak to their situation. Call them to repentance. But most of all, God, be glorified. Thank you for everything that you do for us. And don't take it for granted. For you are a good and merciful God. You're a kind God. Yes, yes. Oh, you're such a loving God. Yes. So, Father, with holy hands lifted, we just worship you for about 30 seconds. Thank you, Lord, for being God. Come on, can you just worship him? Yes, Lord. Thank you. In him will I trust and praise the name of Jesus. You are a rock. You are a fortress. Yes. Come on, I just want to hear the church worship the Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, just worship him for a second. Yes, Lord. We may not do it all week, but today is a day collectively we can worship the Lord. Gospel of John today, chapter 11. How many are happy to be here today? So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. Glory to God. Tell somebody, let's worship him. Let's worship him. And was troubled. 
think that's all we need today. Just look at somebody and say, neighbor, get out of your own way. I'm going to tell somebody else, say, get out of your own way. on you that reckless faith does not consider anybody else. Radical faith thoroughly changes everything. And I presented to you yesterday in my sermon uh, that radical faith is like the civil rights movement. It was radical. It, was, it changed social injustice. Radical faith, like the men who brought their friend to Jesus that was sick of the palsy, is radical. Church, we are close to doing radical things here. That, that, that we are close to seeing some things manifest in our, in our church. Today, I, I really want to impress on you uh, getting out of your own way. Most of you in here are in your own way. Uh, it may be because you're offended by something. It may be because of a doctrinal issue. It may be because you feel some type of way. Whatever it is, you could be in your own way. You could be stopping and hindering what God is trying to do for you. You could be very well stopping a miracle in your life because you refuse to get out of your own way. Uh, Y'all pray for First Lady and TJ. They are flying out of the country this morning. Uh, TJ's a senior this year, so they're doing some things with his senior class. And so they'll be flying out of the country. So y'all keep them in prayer this morning. Uh, so, 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 so radical faith is what I try to get you to see from the Gospel of Mark. We looked at the story. This week, we're looking at the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is not in the synoptic Gospels. 
People of God, hear me today that synoptic, synop, meaning uh, together, uh, optic, synoptic, optic meaning uh, seeing. In other words, they see together. The synoptic gospel, synop, together, optic, see, see together. You have Mark, Matthew, and Luke. Mark being the oldest of the synoptic gospels. John is not a separate from them. But he is a supplement gospel because John, in his old age, around A.D. 80, he writes the gospel of John. He also writes 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. He also writes the book of Revelation. John had the synoptic gospels, but he writes from a different perspective. He writes the spiritual gospel. He writes this gospel that highlights these two facts that Jesus is the Son of God. And the second thing is that Jesus, faith in him alone, will give you salvation. The Gospel of John, people of God, is evangelistic as well as it is apologetic. It is evangelistic because Jesus is trying to reach us. Who is us? Us are the people that are lost. We are in sin. We are on our way to hell. So Jesus is an evangelist. He's reaching out, not through religion, but he's reaching out when he says, I come in the value of this book. You don't believe on me, but believe my words. It is evangelistic, but it is also, that's right, baby, it is also apologetic. Because Jesus is defending who he is. You do, you do know that in the Gospel of John, oftentimes the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, and the elders did not recognize him who he was. They, they, they believed the law, but they didn't, they didn't believe that he was the fulfillment of the law. Yeah. Pastor, how do you prove that with Scripture? Well, listen to me real quickly. There is something called an interpretive challenge when you read the Gospel of John. Here it is, here it is, the interpretive challenge that in John's gospel, chapter 19, it appears that the disciples and Jesus have the Passover meal on Friday. Well, if they have the Passover meal on Friday, he can't die on Friday, and our theology is wrong. We believe that he died on a Friday. Friday night, he's in the grave. Sunday night, he's in the grave. Early Sunday morning, he got up. That is what we preach and that is what the Bible prescribes. Well then, how do you reconcile this interpretive challenge that we see in the text? Well, in northern Palestine, in northern Palestine, where Jesus and most of the disciples were, except Judas, they, they would have saw, they would have saw the Passover from sunrise to sunrise. So sunrise on Thursday to sunrise on Friday, they would have celebrated the Passover lamb. So that lets us know on Thursday night he didn't die. Thursday night they are having Passover. Now the southern, the southern of Jews where the scribes and the Pharisees were from, they would have celebrated the Passover from sunset to sunset. Sunset on Thursday to sunset on Friday, they would have observed the Passover, which was a holy day instituted by God. Stay with me, church. So the northern Palestine Jews, Jesus and them, they would have celebrated it from sunrise to sunrise south, sunset to sunset. That's important because Jesus is arrested that night. He's arrested that night. They don't care about arresting him at night because they got a killing on Friday for the prophecy to come to pass. Amen. Now, because the southern scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, uh, all those Pharisee people, they celebrated from sunset to sunset. Watch this. They can arrest him and kill him on Friday afternoon, but they can still keep the law by sunset. Y'all missed your place to shout. They're more interested in keeping the law, and they can care less if they just killed an innocent man. That's how you all can get caught up in doctrine and not have no faith. You can trust your money, 
but don't trust God. You can try to run this like you run your household, but God says, I'll prescribe the way for you to run my church. So in other words, there is no challenge because it determines how you worship. But here is the fundamental truth that he celebrates Passover on Thursday. He goes to Calvary on Friday. By the afternoon, his heads are now bowed down in the locks of his shoulder. He dies on Friday afternoon. They put him in the grave by 6 p.m. So part of the day is the whole of the day. So he dies on Friday. Now the question, did he die? He dies on Friday. Stays there Friday night. Stays there Saturday night. Can I preach how I feel? It? That's reconciled. Third day, he can't die on Thursday because that's not three days. That's four days. He is not like Lazarus in our text. Jesus dies on a Friday, raises on a Saturday. Look at it again. Part of a day in Jewish custom is the whole of the day. No matter when you got paid on Friday, guess what you're going to tell everybody? I got paid on Friday. Well, then, when we look at this gospel, John writes from this vantage point, Brother Andre. He writes to show us this Jesus in all of his splendor. Yeah. He, John writes this later in his life, and he is exiled to Ephesians, not Patmos. Patmos is where the Romans now exile him, where he writes the book of Revelation. He is in Ephesians, he's in Ephesus, and he writes this gospel, watch this, 15 years after Jesus' ministry. And there's nobody in church history that would doubt or would argue who wrote this gospel. Let me give you some, some proven facts about that, that John wrote this. John excludes himself when he now lists the disciples. Why would you mention yourself, watch this, when you're listing people out, if you hadn't wrote the gospel? That's number one. Number two, all tradition points to God, to John writing this, because over 20 times we see this statement. The disciple whom Jesus loved. All right. Now, they're only talking about one man. Yes, he loved all of his disciples, but John was special. Can, can, can I make some of y'all mad? Because I know some of y'all get mad and walk out. I, I believe I'm special. I, I believe God loves me a little different. I, I didn't say he loved me better than you. I'm just giving you my testimony. Didn't I preach last year around Easter? You were special case. Some of y'all missed that. But, but I just believe I'm special. Oh, I'm talking to one of the daughters of the church. And she'll tell you she's special. She'll tell you that her daddy just love her. And when you look at her, she's small, rotten. I know she's special. Anybody can wave their hand and say, God, I thank you for being special. Yeah. And for any of you that don't believe you're special, you need to lift up that hand and say, thank God that you're special because you was on the wake-up list this morning. You are. John 21, look at verse 24 and 25. 
For some of you thought you'd have to turn in your Bible, open that Bible back up. <laughs> this is the disciple, John 21, 24. This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did that which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the word itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. He says, we know this testimony is true. We, we know that John was an eyewitness to Jesus. So he writes from that vantage point. John, John writes different than Mark, Matthew, and Luke because John was at the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw Jesus glorified. He lays on the bosom of Jesus at supper time. John writes this, and as we are on our journey preparing for Resurrection Sunday, it is my job to lay out to you the transition from public ministry to private ministry. Oh, John chapters 1 through 10, we see the highlight of Jesus' public ministry. We see him doing miracles. We see him witnessing to a woman at the well in John chapter 4. We see him turning water into wine. We see him healing a widow's woman and stopping a funeral procession. We see him doing all these things. Amen. But look at John chapter 10, verse 40, 41, and 42. John chapter 10, verse 40, 41, 42. Look at this. And went again beyond Jordan into the place where John had first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracles. Miracle. But all things that John spake of this man, what are they? Say it louder. They're true. And many believed on him there. Now, early in the chapter, in chapter 10, you see the resistance of Jesus. They don't like him. Matter of fact, he says that you you looking for a sign. I told you that I'm God. You don't believe that. This is in John 10. I have done miracles. You don't believe that because your heart is hard. He said in John chapter 10, I'm done trying to win you over. Can anybody in here have a Holy Ghost fed up and just say, I'm tired of proving to you who I am. If you don't believe that my fruit shows that I'm supposed to be here, then that's on you. Tell somebody, I'm tired of pleasing people. And I'm about to put my focus on God. Yeah, I'm trying not to be good with you. I'm trying to be good with him. Here is the transition, beloved, that, that John 10 ends his public ministry. John chapter 11, don't let me lose you. Is the highlight of his ministry. Because, because Lazarus' uh, 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 resurrection, his coming up from the dead, is different than Jairus' daughter, and it's different than the widow's woman in name. Why? Why? If you remember the funeral procession with the widow's woman, it happened right after the boy died. They put him in the coffin and they're bringing him. Jairus' daughter had just died. Lazarus been dead four days. Here is the connection between public and now Jesus says I'm going to resort to private ministry. From chapter 11 until he dies on Calvary's hill, he spends time with these three people. He spends time with his disciples, with his mother, and with his daughter. He spent time feeding the disciples. He spends time pouring into them. Why? Because he knows, he knows, he knows that the public people have rejected him. But he knows that he has a job to do before he dies. And he needs the disciples to be an anointing level. that when he goes back to heaven, they can carry ministry on. Well, then here we are, beloveds in Bethany. This is the place where his friends, Mary and Martha, and his friend Lazarus are from. The Bible says that he is in Jerusalem handling some other business. And let me give you the date time that coming from Bethany to where he was was a day's journey. 
It would take you a day's journey to get from Bethany to where Jesus was in chapter 10 to give him a message. So on the way, the messenger on their way to giving Jesus a message, Lazarus probably died. Now if you remember, Jesus didn't come right away. He abode there and he said, Lazarus, my friend, sleep with the disciples with their crazy self. They say, well, if he's sleep, he's doing well. He said, oh God, this is what you done gave me, huh? And then God said, well, you're the one who chose him. He waits two more days, that's the third day, the second, third day, and it takes him a day's journey to get to Bethany four days. It takes him four days to get to Bethany, and when he is greeted, he is not greeted by faith, he's greeted by weeping. Can I help you all today that, that even though you are people of faith, you are still human. You still doubt. You still cry. You still have moments where you don't trust God. Don't shoot me down with your amen. There are moments where you don't feel like worshiping. There are moments where you don't feel like lifting up holy hands. There are moments where you're smarter than God. Uh-oh. Yeah, there are moments where you know anybody in here can now relate to that. That there are moments where I have faith, but I ain't using faith. Come on. I got all the faith I need. I got all the scriptures you done said. I'm confessing. I got faith, but I ain't using it. There are times that you are there. But Jesus is here to encourage you that in those moments where you got the faith and you ain't using the faith, he's encouraging you got to put your faith to work. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even all. He comes to Bethany and he sees them crying. Now, now I got to do something. I, I, got, I got to speak on Martha's behalf. Because Martha has gotten a bad rap. Right? Typically we preach her from a place of anger all the time. And there are times where Martha was out of order. But in this particular case, when you really read the text, I don't think she was out of order. Okay, let's just read the Bible and let's see what you come up with. She meets Jesus out before he comes into town. And this is what she says. Jesus, had you been here, my brother wouldn't have died. That don't sound like pain or anger. That sounds like faith. Come on. Come on. Because we know had you been here, yeah. all right. everything would have been all right. Yeah. Now, now, now her faith needs to grow up, but, but I don't think she was trying to get on Jesus. See, you got to be careful that you don't judge somebody off of one instance. The instance in the house was different than this instance. What you mean, Pastor? Come here, Sunday school students, lean in. You remember when she invited Jesus over her house and Mary was sitting at the foot of Jesus and she was about serving and conversing with many things. She now tries to rebuke Jesus. That's different than this. And sometimes y'all judge God and judge people off of one instance. All right. Because I went off on you on Sunday, don't mean every Sunday I'm going to go off on you. But I went off on you because you cussed me out before you left the church. All right. You can tell that side of the story. She says, had you been here? H had you been here? My father, my, 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 my brother would still be living. Jesus says he's died so that the glory of God can be seen. Can I tell you that right now that God is allowing some of y'all to go through just so his glory can be seen through you? That people will not believe God until they see God in you. And the reason that God is using you is that you're built for this. Yeah. See, some people would have gave up a long time ago had they had to go through what you're going through. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm built for this. I, sometimes I don't believe I'm built for it, but I believe that I am built for this. I'm built for the strain. I'm 
built for the turmoil. I'm built for the storm. You need to scream at somebody and encourage your neighbor and say, I'm built for this. I can do all things. That's your problem. God is allowing you. He's allowing you to go through it. Because he knows he put something on the inside of you. I thank God for being a parent because a parent teaches you a lot about God. There are things that my children are good at than the other child. And there are things, there's something wrong with that. There are things that I can tell one child that I know will get done. There's another child I got to tell 17 times. But I love them all just the same. Now some of y'all got one child and they all personalities in one. We pray for that. But God is the same way. He knows that some of y'all going to move if he's saved. And then some of y'all got to fall down and hit your head. And then some of y'all got to break your leg and break your arm before you listen. And then some of y'all got to about die before you listen. God knows his children. I don't know which box you in. And I ain't judging nobody for being in your box. He says this came so that the glory of God could be seen. Yeah. Martha goes, and Mary, Mary comes back and said the same thing. That's what we pick up in verse 32. I'm almost done. Here it is. Because I want you to get out of your own way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired of you messing and self-sabotaging everything good in your life. And I'm tired, of allow, I'm tired of you allowing your past mistakes to give you judgment for your future faith. Yeah, you made some mistakes, but you did learn from that. I want you to pat yourself on the back and say, I did learn from that. See, see, some of y'all think pat yourself on the back is arrogant, but every now and then y'all need to get like David and encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah, I learned from that mistake. I learned from that. say you learn from your past mistakes well if you learn from your past mistakes don't let that dictate your future faith where God is taking you you need to forget those things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are oppressed you keep looking back can't move forward you so scared. And I told you this last week. I might have told you on Life Lunch. I don't know when I told you. But some of y'all got to stop looking for bad every time something good starts happening in your life. We are pessimistic praisers. We are pessimistic praisers. Every time something good starts happening in your life, you start getting like the devil. I wonder where the devil is. Don't worry about where the devil is. You look to God, the author and the finisher of your faith. Come here, Isaiah 53. He'll be your rear guard and your battle axe. You keep looking for the devil. It's going good, but I just know something about to happen. Yeah, now. You keep speaking negative. I just, I, I don't know. It's just too good to be true. Yeah, now. Well, nobody even thinking like that until you start talking that negative stuff. I'm aware that I have an enemy. But my Bible tells me no weapon that is formed against me. I thought I had a church. Some of y'all looking at me crazy. And y'all on y'all phone. A few of y'all that's paying attention. Look at your name and say, there no weapon. Preach it to him and say, no weapon that's formed against you. It ain't. I'm aware. I'm aware I got an enemy. I'm aware that he's trying to kill me. I'm aware that he wants to see me fail. I am aware that he wants to see me crash, but my focus is not on my enemy. My focus, turn me up so they can hear me and say, Lord, my focus is on God. Hallelujah. I ain't worried about him. No. God is prospering you. God blessing your business. God blessing New Bethel. And let me tell you, 
this is why I tell people you don't want to miss church. People joining the church. People trying to get baptized. And when you miss three or four Sundays, you miss that. So you're still stuck in the last Sunday you came. <laughs> Gotta stick with it. Gotta stick with it. That enemy is there. But why are you worrying about him? God blessing us. God blessing you. And you, the first thing you're going to do is not give him praise. Where the devil at? No, change your mentality. Stop looking for the devil and start looking for God. Some of y'all still sleep. Wake your neighbor up and say, stop looking for the devil and start looking for God. I just know something about to happen. What about to happen? Nothing but good. For I know the plans and the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts to prosper you. Not to harm you. To bring you to an aspect. I feel like preaching your own shirt. That's timid. God has not given you. The, am I in the Bible? In the spirit of fear. But of power, that's Holy Ghost. Love, that's Holy Ghost. And the sound, that's Holy Ghost. Get out of your own way. Stop talking yourself out of blessings. Stop talking yourself out of a right relationship with God. Here it is. Stop talking yourself out of the next level. Yes, sir. I told the leadership when we pray uh, this morning, we pray with the musicians and singers and media. We pray that we're all on one accord. I said, watch this. Don't be lying talking about, I got to pray about it. You ain't praying. You're trying to delay an answer. Because it don't take long to pray. Sometimes he'll tell you, but you ain't listening. God, you say, God, give me an answer. He'll give you like, I need to pray. No, he done told you. Yeah. One of the sons told me yesterday that the Holy Ghost arrested him. And he said, the reason that you haven't moved in faith, that's what one of the sons said. He said, he said, the Holy Ghost told him, the reason that you haven't moved in faith is because you don't believe the prophecy that I gave you. That's called self-awareness. Yes, sir. Stop looking for the devil. Amen. He's there. He's always roaming around. Always. He's always visiting. Always. He ain't got no church on. No. He's just a no man. Everywhere. Keep it up, mess. Yeah. I'm preaching better than you responding. Yep. Yeah. He just goes about like a gypsy. Don't worry about him. That's right. right. Get out of your own way. Here it is. That Jesus comes. And she says, I know my, my brother's going to raise the re resurrection. She said, he says, you're looking at the resurrection. Mm -hmm. You're looking at yeah, yeah, come on, man. what you need. Yeah, yeah. People say, Pastor, why do I need church? Write these three things down if you always question why I talk about coming to church. Number one, you need community. That's why you go to family reunions. That's why you went to the club. You went to the club to show off. But you needed a community. Why? You showed off so somebody could tell you, girl, you looking good. Or man, I like them shoes. That was the perverted community. But you need this community over here to hold you accountable to pray you through. You cannot live this life on your own. You can't have a good marriage on your own. You can't raise kids by yourself. It takes a godly Village, not just any type of village. Yes. Everybody can't correct my kids. Because some of y'all got ill motives. So now I don't believe it. It takes a village. It takes a godly biblical village. I need somebody to correct them with the word of God, not with your emotions. Because some of y'all correct kids because y'all mad at the parents, not because what God said. I'm preaching better than you respond. I'm in the house this morning. This is called pastoral preaching. This ain't called popcorn preaching. Some of y'all correct kids because y'all don't like the parents. 
And so you say to the kids what you really want to say to the parents. So I don't believe in all this takes a village. No. Correct mind with the word. Because what they hear from you should line up with what they hear from me. And them jokers will tell you, they hear the word all the time. Heathen, get on up now. You're oversleeping, get on up. They hear it. Well, you should be easy on them. Why would be easy on them? The world ain't. That's right. You want me to coddle them? No. When they get out into the world, ain't nobody going to coddle them. At all. Your boss don't care that you had a bad night, that you broke up with your boyfriend. You better get your behind the clock in and answer these emails. Preach, Pastor, thank you, lights. Get out of your way. Number two reason, you thought I lost my point. Number two reason is that you need to worship God collectively. You need community. And you need to worship God collectively. There is power in worshiping God secretly. But there's a greater power when all of us get on one accord. Put some Bible on it. And they were all in one accord and the Holy Ghost fell. And they were set on them holding tongues like fire. Hallelujah. There is something about collective worship. Yes, sir. That's why pastor consistently preaches about us all standing during worship. I said in the leadership class this morning, see, you don't have to worship like me. I grew up differently than most of you in here. So similar. So my dancing and my praising is my own experience on how I worship God. I didn't say you got to dance like me. Most of the preachers don't preach like me. That's okay. Right? But there are some similarities in what we say. Yep. So, when we are all worshiping, although you don't worship like me, we do worship the same God, and there are some distinct things, but there are some similar things. What is the similar thing? When a judge walks into the room, everybody, whether you on trial or not, better stand up. I remember being in court for a ticket. Speeding ticket. I know it's a surprise. I know. And I was on there for a speeding ticket. And I, this was my first time going, and I didn't really know what they were going to do. I thought they were going to lock me up, Mike, for a speeding ticket. I had never been in no trouble before, really, uh, or caught for it, let me say it like that. And uh, so I'm in, I'm in that courtroom, and they said, please rock. I froze up. And there was a joker across the way. He was like, I ain't staying up for no white man. I ain't doing that. And I didn't know what to do, but I saw that bailiff come down the line and gave him grace. He says, young man, I'm going to need you to stand up. I ain't standing up for no white man. Y'all had us a press. He said, young man, I'm going to need you to stand up. He kept talking. Where you go? They had hemmed him up and taken him out. Now, he probably was there for jaywalking. But he'll turn a jaywalking charge into a felony. Is that you might not dance like me, you might not speak in tongues, you might not lift your hands, but at least when God comes in the room, you can stand up. Can everybody in the room just stand up? Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is in for me. I'm still disobedient. If you can just stand to your feet and say, God, I know you're here, so we reverence you because you're God. Hallelujah, you, Jesus. Thank you, church. Thank you, church. So watch this. When praise and worship is up, even if I don't know the music, I'm still not reverencing the praise team, not reverencing the kids, not reverencing these great musicians. I'm standing up not because you sound good. I'm standing up because he's here. The judge done showed up. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. He done showed up. Yeah. Showed up. When he shows up, yeah. miracles happen. When he shows up, deliverance takes place. But you got to get out of your own way. Martha, Martha is in her way because she says a faith statement. Then she says 
a doubt statement. Mary says a faith statement. If you would have been here, my brother would have got a doubt. But then she says a doubt statement. And that is the frailty of humanality. That we can be on top of a mountain on Sunday. But let something happen to you well. that you weren't expecting. Come on here. Man, I don't know where God be at. Oh, for real? That's what we're doing now. Now, all of a sudden, he didn't know that was going to happen to you. In your lowest points, God is with you. Amen. In your most successful moments, God is with you. He's a God of the mountain. Hallelujah. And he's a God of the valley. Come on, God. Hallelujah. This is what I like about God that I just found out. He's a God of the in-between. Yeah. Anybody can get glad that God is a God of the God of yeah. Well, then when Mary was come where Jesus saw him, she fell down. Then she came weeping, even a poor family. This is a, it's not a rich family. Because they all live together. This is not a very wealthy family, but even a poor family had to have mourners and they had to have somebody singing with them, somebody playing the flute. That's why at our funerals, y'all just thought we did it because we was black. That's why we have people that read condolences and we have a singing and we have preaching. This is biblical. That we are lifting up the dead's lifestyle to in front of you to God. That's why we are very particular who we bury because Pookie and Ray Ray and them, they might not have been living for the Lord. That's why, look at me, family members, because you are encouraging family members that fight, cuss, and, and, and do all that crazy stuff, you talk about, I go call my cousin and them, that's bad because you need to be witnessing to that cousin that's smoking, drinking, and fighting so that when they die, they don't go to hell. Y'all just miss that. Do we love to brag about our crazy cousin? About our fighting cousin? About our cousin who did time? We love to brag about their sin, but we should be showing them the way to Jesus. I miss about a hundred of y'all right there. See, you love to brag about my cousin, don't play that. But you should be saying, cuz, you shouldn't be doing that. I have lost my church. Because you want to be the church kid, but you want to feed that foolishness in your cousin that shouldn't be getting delivered. And so they can't get delivered because you're not being a good evangelist. Come on, man. He says, Freak. thank you, mother. I, I, I see this groaning, this, 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 this wailing. Look at verse 33. Yeah. The weeping that came, the Bible says that when Jesus saw them, verse 33, came with her, he groaned in his spirit. And he was troubled. Now, now, Deacon Gibson, he, why is he troubled? Because, mother, they, they, they're sad that their brother has died. He says, from verses 1 to 32, I done showed you who I am. And y'all still crying like I can't get it done. Well, There's four things I see in this text. Here's my observation number one. My observation number one is that I see pain. Yeah. That, that they have lost somebody. And can I tell you all something? That everything you've been through, you should experience some sort of pain. I didn't say you couldn't cry. I just said you can't keep crying. I didn't say you can't be mad. I'm just saying don't let the sun go down on your wrath. I didn't say you had to agree with everything that I say. But I did say we can't be in division. I didn't say you got to like everything God is doing in your life, but I just said you can't doubt God. See, this is how you get in your own way. You let pain dictate how you're going to have faith. Well, come on now. See, your logic can override faith. It's called, I got enough common sense. Sometimes all your common sense ain't common. That's number one. Number two, sometimes your common sense can get in the way of what God really wants to do. Yeah, come on. Um, um, first lady uh, had a problem with her neck. Her neck was hurting and it was causing uh, what we believe migraine headaches. 
People think that she's quiet because she's stuck up, but she's really quiet oftentimes because either she's praying or she's battling a migraine. People don't know that. They just see her on the front row and why I first lady so stand up because her head hurt. That's why she stayed, that's why her head is hurting in the loud music and she done heard this screaming for 20 plus years, so that hurts her head. So she was battling this neck problem. So we were just trusting God and believing God that God would heal her, heal her body, heal her mind, and pray with her. And so she went to the doctor. They gave her some medicine, and that medicine uh, blessed her. It gave her some relief. Finally, after all of these years, it gave her some relief. But this is what she said out of her mouth. I thank God for the medicine, but I thank God for being my healer. Yeah. Yeah. See, all of y'all think that faith preachers preach against medicine. We don't preach against medicine, but we do know that medicine assists what God can only do. Are you hearing me? I see pain in the text because they say, watch this, they're coming weeping and they're crying. Look what Jesus does in verse 34. He says, I'm sick of all this. Where y'all laying? Show me where he's at. I done heard from Martha I done heard from Mary. I done seen all these people doubt me and I done showed up. Show me where you laid him. Yeah. They take him down to where they laid him and as they're walking, watch this, they are whispering in verses 35, 46, and 37. They're whispering. They're saying, Jesus gets to the tomb and he cries. And they think he's crying because he's thinking about his friend Lazarus. That's why y'all got to stop judging people who praise God and who cry at the altar. Because you think you know their personal life. They going through. That must mean mm -hmm, his wife ain't doing what she needs to do. Mm -hmm, that's why she do, That's why he doing that. That's, you judging something that you have no idea what God is working. And you are the same one that's in your own way. Can't get delivered because you look at everybody else. Look at what they say. They say, behold, how he loved him. But Jesus wasn't crying because of Lazarus. He was crying because of them. Jesus done showed up. Their deliverers done showed up. And they have missed it. It's like the man who was on a boat, stuck in the middle of the ocean. He said, God, send me relief. God sent a man on a paddle boat. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. Then God sent a, a tanker truck or a tanker a, 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 a boat. And he said, no, I'm waiting on God. Then the helicopter came down and brought him a ladder. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. He died in that ocean. Got to heaven. He said, God, why didn't you come and save me? He said, I sent three rescues, you big dummy. Why didn't you get them? In other words, in other words, your deliverance can be right there. But because you're in your own way, you'll miss what God is doing. I see pain. But this is what I see in verse number 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laying upon it. Verse 38, I see patience. God is patient with us. Yes, Lord. Even though we get in our own way, even though there's pain in our life, God is patient with us. He's patient with us when we say some dumb stuff. Like God don't never come through for me. Yeah, I know you done said it. Get quiet. That's fine, man. I'm preaching good. You say things like, I don't know when God gonna do it. I don't know why God blessing them and he ain't blessing me. We say some silly things, but God is patient with us. Can anybody thank God for being patient with you? Think about if God treated you how you treat people. I know some of y'all got road rage. Don't let nobody cut you off. You be in there singing gospel songs. Every praise. Every praise. I'm like, blankety blank. God, patient with you. In your cussing season, he was patient. In your judgment season, he was patient. When you was in your gossip season, he was patient. When you was in your doubting season, he was patient. Can I say, please be patient with me. God is not 
God through it. I see patience here because he groans again. And he sees the obstacle that is in their way. Look what the Bible tells you. That it is a grave. I mean, it's a grave. It's a cave. Watch this. It's a cave, Deacon Augustus. But it got a stone over it. Now, now, I get it. I get it. People probably could steal the body. But why would they steal the body of a broke man? Second thing, why you got a why you got something over the the, 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 uh, the grave? It ain't like you coming out of there. The the cave and the stone represented finality, and it was done. They were done with this situation. God is saying there's some things you ain't done with that I'll say you're done with. Now, nowhere in the text do I see Mary and Martha asking him to get him back up. Find it and I'll apologize. I don't see them asking for him to be resurrected. Now, I do see them asking four days ago, but by the time he showed up, in their mind, it was over. Yeah. How many of you all in your mind, there's some things that you just say, they over, they ain't gonna never come, and here come God out of nowhere telling you, it ain't over yet. I can't get no help right there. You wish it would stay there, but he said, no, I need that thing to come out so that, guess what, I can get some glory out of it. Hallelujah. Come on, I see pain, and I see patience. But look at verse 39, Jesus said, take, take, take ye away the stone. And then Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time, he's stinking. Mm. All my ladies, make some noise real quick. <laughs> ladies are, women are so particular about how things look. Yeah. You ever went on somebody's house, a woman's house, a real woman? <laughs> Not these three or fours are talking about the real woman. And they can't sit down. They clean it up the whole time you're there. Because they're particular about how things are. They really can't sit down and, and, and enjoy the festivity because they're making sure. You want something to drink? You got everything you need? Clean up on. They're constantly particular. Martha, being the eldest sister, She's really particular because she's saying, Lord, uh, if you open this up now, it's going to make us all look bad. I get what Martha is saying because if, if you allow him to speak, it ain't going to be bad on last week. See, Dad, Mary's the youngest. It's going to fall back on me. Martha says, Lord, if you take away the stone now, uh, he's speaking. It's four days Decomposition is starting to happen. What are, you, what are you doing? Can I tell you the third thing I see? I see that, watch this, that your faith will bring pressure. Yeah. And while you are getting out of your way, you're going to feel some pressure. You're going to feel pressure that what you are believing God for, you may look stupid. You may look silly. And to anybody who don't got faith, they don't understand why you are trusting God. They don't understand why you are putting anointing the oil on your kids before they go out to school. They don't know why you laying hands on the sick. You might look silly to them, but say, I don't look silly. Amen. Oh, yeah, I believe that God is going to do something great. I see the pressure of my faith. Yeah. Situations that you are in will bring pressure. Yeah. 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 They're trying to make you Doubt God. Yeah. She says something in faith, then she says something in doubt. Yeah. Can I tell you that there's something called the secret will and the revealed will of God? Yeah. See, God's secret will is what He has not yet revealed unto us in terms of there are things that God has yet hidden from us that we don't need right now because we barely read this. How He gonna give you some more revelation? His revealed will is what's written in his word. See, his secret will are things that are too far beyond you. They're too far beyond me. That's why you got to be careful that all of these men and women of God talk about, I got a new revelation. No, it ain't that you got a new revelation. You just uncovered what God had already given us. His revealed
revealed will is his word. He reveals to us what he wants us to do. Y'all still here? Watch this. I see pain. I see patience. I see God allowing my situation to give me pressure. Then I see God wants me to participate. Look what happens uh, in verse number 40 and 41. Jesus unto her said, saith unto uh, them uh, that if thou wouldest believe it, should you see the glory of God. Look at verse 41. Are we going to stop for a minute? Verse 41. Watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 41. Put up the room to see this sister gives. Now Martha and Mary have been talking. I want everyone, the whole church, let's read verse 41 up into the period. All right, I'm sorry. Let's just read the first four words. You ready? Read. Then, then they took the white side. Who is they? What Mary and Martha? Because they're women and that wasn't their job. The they are the people that you saw in verse 33. You do remember that when Mary came from the house, they left, they left the house with her, supposing that she was coming to the tomb to cry over Lazarus' body. But when they showed up to cry, God changed the crying session into a praise session. He said, y'all came here to cry about what happened. But I want you to praise about what's getting ready to happen. Let me say it again for those who have blessed God. Some of y'all crying over what you lost. Some of you crying over what you miss. Some of you crying over what you feel like God didn't do. But I need some of y'all to praise God for what he's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to bless you. He's getting ready to open up doors. He's getting ready to heal your Do I have a witness? Is there anybody in the church that just believes? And say, neighbor, your future looks broader than your past. Yeah, you got the wrong neighbor. They didn't say it like they mean it. Fine, you another neighbor. And say, your future looks broader than your past. They came down to the tomb in verse 41, and then they took away the soul. You better be careful in this next season who you associate yourself with. You don't need nobody who ain't got the same faith that you got. But you need somebody who's going to be honest with you, but also pray with you. You need somebody that's going to tell you the truth, but also pray with you. I need to know that anybody in here that got enough faith to believe that although I went through some hell, although I went through some mess, I just believe God has got something great for me. Go one to three people real quick and say, neighbor, God got something good for you. God got something. I said, go one to three people. Feel like working. 
in a little bit. Can I preach out? I feel it. Well, give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, I know that you've been going through some things. But I heard the Lord say that if you got faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move these mountains. But just when you're getting ready to believe God, there is a season that doubt will play. But I came to announce to you to get out of your own way because you've been trying to figure it out. But the Lord has already worked it out. Have I got a witness that you know, that you know, that you know that even though the things may be stacked up against you, I heard the Lord say, I got your best interest in mind. And when the Bible declares that after they rolled the stone away, they didn't know what the Lord was going to do. But I heard that God has a miracle on his mind. When he woke you up, he had a miracle on his mind. When he started on your way, he had a miracle on his mind. And the Bible says that the Bible says that when he got to the tomb, he said, Lazarus, I want you to come forth. Now you already know what I'm getting ready to say. He had to be specific because he had, he said, everybody get up. Everybody will it up. But there's a blessing with your name on it. Some of y'all miss your places, Sean. There's a blessing that's specific for you. There's a blessing that I'm not going to share because that blessing has got my name on it. Look at your name on it. Say, name I know we sit by each other, but there's a blessing specifically designed for me. Yeah. <laughs> 
pink jacket. I know you don't like me doing this. I've never met you before. You were secretly praying, God, give me a word. You got your word. And you don't like being on Front Street. I know this. I don't know your name. If I have seen you before, I don't recognize because your hair looks real good today. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit wanted me to encourage you to let you know that this is a pivotal moment in your life. Amen. That you are almost talking yourself out of coming today. Not because you don't like church. Because you're done with the theatrics. You really need God to talk to you. You just said a week ago, you wanted God, you want the Bible to come to life. I don't know you, so they know we didn't plan this. Because some people doubt the prophetic word in the Baptist church. And I'm here to announce that there's a prophet in the house. So let me tell you that the Bible has come to life to you. You have, you have you've enjoyed this sermon, but God wants to speak specifically to you. Stand to your feet. God says that this, this is a turnaround for you. The things you've been secretly praying for, he's getting ready to give you. The things that you've been striving for, they're getting ready to happen for you. Here's my only word for you. Somebody give me that scripture in Deuteronomy. Do not forget the Lord when you go into the land. I'm going to give you a scripture with a prophecy. I don't know right off the top of my head. God says, do not forget me when you go into the land that I'm giving you. Just Google that. Do not forget, the, do not forget me for the land you're going into. God says, this new job, this new opportunity that you've been praying about. He says, the only thing I'm asking you, God raised that you've been asking for. Yes, you're going to be able to take the trips that you've been wanting to take. Yes, you're going to be able to do everything else that you want to do. But he says, don't forget me. He says, don't forget me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I got you. Hold on. I got to give you a scripture. I'm not done. Hold on. I don't. Deuteronomy 8 and 11. Put that up on Deuteronomy 8 and 11. Put in the Amplified version. Yeah, give, give it to the Amplified. This is your word. Write this down from Deuteronomy 8 and 11. You got it? Let me read it. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments and his judgments, precepts, and his statutes which I have commanded you today. Your life is getting ready to get better and greater. Be easy. And you didn't do nothing to deserve it. Put your hands, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Don't lay hands on her. Priest, don't lay hands on her. Father, in Jesus' name. River down right to lay hands on her. I speak prosperity in your life. Every burden removed. Every bozo get out of her life. Thank you for bringing to her the Boaz, the plan you have in Jesus' name. Increase her confidence in the name of Jesus. And if so, and so it is, somebody give it all praise. 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 Some in a black shirt stand up and just joined last week. Black shirt. Tell your wife to stand up with you. was a sermon for you, but these last four weeks have been for you. God wanted me to tell you that what you're experiencing, the love, the blessings, this is for both of y'all. So just look at him, wife. You look at me too, it's for both of y'all because y'all won. God says, do not look for evil any longer. All you do is focus on the blessings. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 7 through 9. I mean, 71, Jeremiah 17, 73, I know this one. That because you're trusting the Lord and you've made the Lord your hope, God says from this day forward, you're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And that things are getting ready to come to you all that you've been praying about years ago. And deliverance and peace. I hear the word peace. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear the word peace coming over you. It's going to be such a peace that it's going to surpass all understanding. Blessed is the man 
that trusted in the Lord. The key word in that verse is blessed. The word blessed means empowered to prosper. Get ready for a season of prosperity. Get ready for a season of sweatless victory, not because you deserve it, but because of his mercy and his kindness. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Lay hands with the Charles. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. I don't mind waiting. Come on. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. I'm done. The two more, I'm done. That brother back there in the gray shirt. Stand up, brother. Right here. Yes. That you handsome, handsome guy right there. I think that's great. How long? You are a straightforward person, so I'm not going to talk to you like this, even though I don't know you. You don't like a lot of fluff. Acts 9 is your scripture. How long will you fight with me, saith the Lord? On the other side of your obedience is your breakthrough, both financially, spiritually, and physically. You are not battling an ailment, but there is something, injury, that you have. I don't know what it is. That's lingering. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't make you... Uh, where you can't function, but it doesn't bother you. I don't know what that is. Lord says, on the other side of your obedience, I'm talking about real obedience, selling out. You're selling out for God, or you're going hard for Him, like you do anything else in life. God's on the other side that's breakthrough. Prosperity, breakthrough financially. Matter of fact, the things that you've been thinking about, the ideas you had, you've seen other people do them and get money. And God says, He's still got some stuff in you that He wants to do. The gospel on the other side of your feet is Acts chapter 9. Give you verse. Yeah. I think he said what it's hard to kick against the prince. Acts 9. Find that one for me. Acts 9 is hard to kick against the prince. God says, How long will you fight? And you're not a disrespectful fighter. You just, you just ignore. And God says, I've been talking to you. That's why we wake you up. And I times 444. 111. 112. It's our time. Not no specific time. It just looks high. Because God says, I've been specifically talking to you. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, lay hands on it now. Father, in Jesus' name, this man of God is being propelled into this next season. Everything you have for, on his head, Charles, lay hands on his head. Speak to his mind, God. Renew him. Oh. Hey, God said, I'm forgiving you. You ain't got to pay for that. I already paid for it. Oh, the Lord, I know my way. I know. Oh, God. Oh, God. Don't mind me. Every head lifted. Get out of your way. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. God is pulling on some of your faith. He's pulling on your faith about your giving. He's pulling on your faith about some of y'all working in ministry. You keep thinking of the same excuse. I ain't got no time. I'm busy. God is saying get out of your own way. You're missing out on partnering with God. Okay, I do want to say this. This brother, this young lady, that young man that I gave a prophecy to, if that prophecy is false, please tell the church now if it's false. Okay, the second thing I want you to tell them, if we got together before service to do this, did we do that? Did we get, did we get, did we get together before service? Did we get together before service and plan this? Did we get together before service and plan this? Have I ever met you in my life? I met you before I ever talked to you about this? You'll hear a different name. All right, first time. <laughs> hey, did we get together before service and plan this? Are you sure? Okay, I want y'all to talk to me. Pastor, why are you doing that? Because the prophet is something to the soul of the prophet. I want you to all to know this is not for show. I ain't got no holy oil or no blessed water to give you. I'm just giving you what God says. 
and the prophetic voice is in this church. Amen. Let's worship him. I don't mind waving. Come on. Come on.
salvation, rededication, church membership. I want to extend the book. Maybe you are dealing with something or battling something and you just can't seem to shake it by yourself. I offer you prayer. There is a minister, a deacon or deaconess waiting to pray with you. If you're a little nervous, that's okay. Look next to you and say to your neighbor, would you walk down with me? We'll give you more time. Salvation, rededication, church membership, prayer. If any one of these fits you,
but another soul, Lord God, who's come to join your body, Lord God, in our plot. Lord, we thank you. We ask that you would just allow us to be everything that she needs, Lord God. Lead and guide her, Lord God, through your word, Lord God. We ask that you would just let us love her, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you are continuing to add souls to the church, Lord God, according to your word. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
You take your extra and you give it to other things like the education coalition or to food pantry or to this and that. Your tithe does not go to those ministries. Does that make sense? It goes to the church and then you give your extra to the church. Pastor, why are you saying that? Because you could give a $300 offering to the whatever, but that was really your tithe. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Amen. It is holy and righteous unto God. And speaking of our education coalition, our uh, scholarship starts today, right? It opens up today. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. Let's give Dr. Aldrich and our whole education coalition a hand. Sister Pamela, uh, Brother Thompson, Sister Thompson, Deacon Smith. Amen. You on that, you on that committee too? You raise your hand. No, no, no. Don't give me an announcement. Who is that? Stand up wherever she's talking about. Ah, Brother Johnson, you on that now too? Praise God. Give God praise for you. Amen. Amen. All right. So that starts today. And so we want you to be a part of that. If you know anybody who needs a scholarship, uh, please, please let them know what's going on. Last but not least, they already mentioned about next week I'll be preaching at 3.30. If you want to go, I don't believe the van will be going. If it is going, talk to Deacon Jones. But if not, carpool. It's right over in Brooklyn. Amen. Not too far. It's a stone's throw from here, okay? So we'll be over there ministering uh, and enjoying a brother and a friend of mine. Uh, uh, Pastor Todd is a great man of God, and he'll be celebrating his pastor anniversary. So we want to show up and show out, okay? Uh, and we want to be a part of that. Amen? I don't think I'm missing anything else if I am. Uh, celebrate recovery. Men's ministry tomorrow? Oh, that's right. Ministry, men's ministry. All the men make some noise. Yeah. That's tomorrow at what time? 6.30, I think the women are going to make their uh, time up because we had BYF, amen, and so they'll make that up, they'll give that announcement to you, but men will be meeting here, and as I said during the marriage series, men, you need men's ministry, you need some place where you can talk about the word of God, and, and, and you're not around your wife, or your daughters, or your aunties, you need some other men to bounce ideas off of, can I get a witness from all the men, amen. all right, if you spend your whole time talking to women, you're not going to get what you need. You need some other men to talk to that's going to encourage you and challenge you to be the best man that you can be. All right. Stand it to your feet, everyone. T-shirts. All right. So any retreat for the women's retreat, please see Sister uh, Rochelle. She has your T-shirts for the retreat. Amen. We don't want you to forget any of that. Because we want you to make sure that whatever you paid for, that you got. Typically, I don't do this like this, but I want to make sure that we're clear. This is a season of clarity. Amen. I don't want anybody leaving with a different, I didn't hear that. I wasn't in the service when you said that. You got to hear what I'm saying, okay? I want to make sure that I'm clear. Be praying for us. We are about 93%, you think, Deacon Smith, uh, with about starting our second floor project. We are super close. 1993, we're right about here. We're ready to go over. So that's why we need radical faith, and we need people that are going to encourage the project, not try to pull it down. We're right there. Everything is lining up. we got one more meeting, and I think we'll be able to announce to the church that we're ready to do that. Last but not least, April 7th. Everybody say April 7th. All leaders immediately following church, April 7th, leaders immediately following church I need you in the leadership room for 10 minutes after church we're going to be launching something new on our e website so we want you to be a part of that and then I'm going to announce it to the church April 14th but I want to announce it to all leaders April 7th immediately following the church in room number nine that's the leadership room on the education wing okay let's come into agreement with God's word and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron unto his son, say, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace, and they shall put my name on the children of Israel. And I will bless them, Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost. May the rest will abide and be with you hence now and forevermore. I speak a blessing over your life that cannot be reversed, but it's a blessing. That comes only from the Lord. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. Have a great evening. We'll see you this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Be blessed.